In the latest installment of SpaceX's Starship Launch Tower Saga, the company rolled a claw-like component to the pad and attached it to the tower's newly installed Starship Quick Disconnect arm. The new Mechazilla grabbing arm will help SpaceX in achieving some of its most ambitious goals yet. This massive arm could allow for even faster rocket turnaround times, allowing SpaceX to launch Starship up to three times per day. How could Musk pull this off? We answer these questions and more in today's video, so get ready, strap yourself in, and join us as we take a deep dive into all the new Mechazilla. Tesla CEO Elon Musk is about to use some robot chopsticks on his massive Starship rocket. Back in August, Elon Musk explained how the new Mechazilla orbital grabbing arm will help Starship. SpaceX will try to catch the largest ever flying object with robot chopsticks, he posted on his Twitter page, along with a clip from 1984's The Karate Kid showing stars Ralph Macchio and Pat Morita attempting to catch a fly with chopsticks. Success is not guaranteed, but excitement is, he added. Basically, the goal with Mechazilla is to catch the ship and its super heavy booster as they make their way back to Earth. This method could be a step up from the drone ships currently used for Falcon 9 boosters returning to Earth after missions. Designed with three primary goals in mind, Elon Musk has outfitted the Starship Launch Tower, a nearly 150 meter tall framework, with three massive arms that the CEO has informally nicknamed Mechazilla. The first of these arms is a relatively simple swinging structure with a giant claw-like appendage that has already been installed on the tower. Once a bit more plumbing is done and a few more parts are installed, that quick disconnect arm, or QD arm, will help stabilize and balance Super Heavy during Starship installation. The QD arm will also attach the giant reusable upper stage to power supplies and the pad's tank farm while it's still on the ground. But to be honest, the star of the show has always been a pair of even larger arms that SpaceX hopes will one day allow it to catch starships and super heavy boosters out of the air. But that's not all. Those catcher arms, which SpaceX employees refer to as chopsticks, serve multiple purposes. SpaceX Starbase launch site, which is located walking distance from the Gulf of Mexico on the South Texas coast, was always going to have to deal with the extreme weather and high winds on a daily basis, which likely explains why they were never considered in the first place. Furthermore, conditions that are already problematic at sea level become a near constant nightmare. Why? Well, as you know, the Starship and Super Heavy are basically hollow cylinders with large surface areas that must be manipulated regularly 50 to 150 meters above the ground so the climate is not exactly ideal for vertical launch vehicle integration. SpaceX already has to regularly halt work involving boom lifts and cranes at Starbase. For Starbase to ever be able to handle frequent orbital Starship launches, let alone the 100 per year Elon Musk has hinted at, cranes were never going to be a practical long-term solution for the all-weather capabilities and rapid reusability SpaceX requires. To put it another way, if SpaceX wants to catch the world's largest rocket booster in upper stage on a regular basis in the future, a tower with giant arms or some other exotic crane-free solution will be required at Starbase. All of this is to say that the massive pair of arms on the Starship launch tower have a more immediate and guaranteed purpose. Stacking, lifting, and otherwise manipulating Super Heavy and Starship in almost any weather condition. More recently, Musk gave us some sneak peeks on how the whole system might work. Firstly, for lifting and catching, the booster will most likely use two pins. Musk said that maybe it's better to modify grid fins to take more load, implying that the plans are still in the works. The ship would also sport something that could flip out from the leeward side. Musk added that maybe it's part of the forward flaps, but probably not. The booster will slide out to line up with the orbital launch pad, ready to fly again, thanks to tank tread on the arms. This means the launch tower arms, theoretically, will be able to reach down and grab Super Heavy from a SpaceX transporter, lifting it onto the orbital launch mount. The main arms will then drop down, grab Starship from another transporter, and raise the 50-meter rocket around 100 meters off the ground to install it on top of the Super Heavy once the quick disconnect arm has swung into place and grabbed Super Heavy's inner stage to secure it. After that, the QD arm can link Starship to the pad systems. This plan marks a sharp departure from SpaceX's previous efforts to reuse rockets. For the semi-reusable Falcon 9, the first stage booster either returns to Earth on an autonomous drone ship in the sea or a land-based launch pad. During its descent, the rocket fires its engines to come to a rest on the launch pad. So why not do that then? Because, as Musk indicated on August 13th, Catching the rocket and ship with the tower means that neither of them needs landing legs to support themselves as they return. The Starship will only need legs for missions that land on other planets, to the Moon, and Mars until there is local infrastructure. It's worth noting that the Falcon 9 boosters use their legs to support themselves as they came in to land on those drone ships. If the Mecha arms can capture the rocket and transport it back to the launch pad, SpaceX may be able to reuse the rockets more quickly than ever before. 
Falcon 9 booster's fastest turnaround time from the previous flight to reflight is 27 days. And with the Mechazilla, Musk expects Starship to be able to fly three times a day. Musk may come to rely on that quick turnaround time if he wants to create a city on Mars by 2050. In 2019, he anticipated that the city will need about 1 million tons of cargo to become self-sufficient. If each ship can carry 100 tons, SpaceX will need to fly 10,000 times in the next 30 years, or around 330 times every year. Musk is predicting a turnaround time of less than an hour and has promised that the future starships will be retrievable using this and similar apparatuses. The second scenario is more likely if and when starships start flying passengers between large cities on point-to-point -point flights, a service Musk has promised will be accessible once the starship is given the green light for commercial flights. For months, SpaceX has been working on those chopstick arms around the clock, but they may be almost done, according to information shared by a foreign member who visited Starbase. According to the employee they spoke with, SpaceX planned to remove Super Heavy Booster 4 from the orbital launch mount pretty soon to make room for the Mechazilla chopstick arm installation. To put it another way, after proving itself correct with Super Heavy, it appears that SpaceX plans to install the Starship launch tower's chopstick arms and carriage as soon as possible. As crazy as this may sound, Musk is someone who has revolutionized the automobile and space industry. He is no dummy and is the face of today's most technological advancements and has made billions along the way. Tesla and SpaceX both began as far-fetched, almost impossible ideas, and now you can't turn a corner without seeing a Tesla. And SpaceX Dragon rockets are also making people in cargo flights to the International Space Station on almost a monthly basis. Love him or hate him, if anyone can make a sci-fi robot armor reality, it is Elon Musk. So, I wouldn't dismiss his ideas as delusional or crazy just yet. The plan may sound quite ambitious, but SpaceX has made massive progress and is well on its way to make the dream a reality. So it might just be a matter of months or years before we see the Mechazilla in all its glory. And that brings us to the next question. When will we get to see this giant tower in action? Possibly in the near future? Musk announced on August 30th that it might be used with the fifth booster, as this year's orbital flight will likely use the fourth booster. Mechazilla could make its appearance sooner rather than later. Are you excited to see this robot arm in action? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe with post notifications for more videos like these.